Hello everyone and welcome to our today's class. It is our fourth and last lesson on the topic reflection at curved surfaces. So as usual, let me comment by giving you the quote of the day, which states that the first procedure in planning to fail is just failing to make a plan. So we'll discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we'll be looking at graphical analysis of the mirror formula. So remember we did say that the mirror formula states that the reciprocal of focal length must be equal to the sum of the reciprocal of object distance and the image distance. So the first graph that we are analyzing is a graph of 1 over u against 1 over v. So when a statement is written this way, it means 1 over u will always be on the vertical or on the y-axis and 1 over v will always be on the horizontal axis. That is the one that is against, uh, always goes to the horizontal axis or the x-axis whereas the one that begins will always be on the uh, vertical or the y-axis. So the graph of 1 over u against 1 over v is always a straight line graph uh, uh, which originates from the vertical axis towards the horizontal axis. So remember u means the object distance. Uh, that is the distance from the object measured from the pole or from the mirror. And v represents the image distance. That is the image uh, measured from the the distance measured from the image uh, towards the pole of a concave or a convex mirror. So because this graph is always a straight line graph, so as you can see, one over u is on the vertical axis or on the y axis, whereas one over v is on the horizontal axis. So because u is in centimeters, then one over u, that is the reciprocal, it must be in per centimeters. That is from the loss of indices when u goes upwards it becomes u power negative one therefore the sign also becomes uh, per centimeter or centimeter power negative one then because v if v is in centimeters then one over v will be in per centimeters that is the reciprocal of centimeters or centimeters power negative one from the laws of indices which are taught in mathematics so because the graph will always be a straight line graph, then it means we have to compare it with the equation of a straight line graph. So from mathematics, we did say that the equation of a straight line graph is given by y is equals to mx plus c, where y represents the y-axis, m represents the, uh, the gradient or the slope of the graph, then x represents the x-axis or the horizontal axis, while c represents the y-intercept or the intercept of, of the vertical axis like for our case the y intercept will be at this particular point so we say the one over u intercept or the reciprocal of u intercept so because the equation is a straight line graph we have to compare the mirror formula we have to reduce the mirror formula to match or to correspond with the equation of a straight line graph so what is on our y axis or on the, on the vertical axis is one over u so we have to play with the mirror formula to a way that we make one over u to be the subject of the formula. So to achieve that, first of all, we leave one over u on one side alone. That means we will remove positive one over v from this side. So when it crosses equal sign, it becomes a negative so that we have one over u is equals to negative, uh, negative one over v plus one over f because you already had one over f on this other side. Then this one can still be rewritten as I can as well decide to start from u from one over u, uh, so I can bring this one over u. I just start with one over u is equals to negative one over v then plus one over f. So there is no harm as long as you do not interfere with the signs. So we have uh, one over u is equals to one negative one over v plus one over f. So I've decided to start with one over u because I want it to match uh, with the uh, the y to match with the y because what is on my y axis or on the vertical axis is actually 1 over u then what is on the x axis is 1 over v so you can see they're actually matching so my x axis is having 1 over v then the y intercept or the 1 over v 1 over u intercept will be equal to the reciprocal of the focal length so we are saying that the x intercept so remember x intercept or the 1 over u intercept uh, is at this particular point uh, so at the 1 over v intercept or at the x intercept all the values of y intercept all the values of the y axis are always zero 
So at the 1 over v intercept, so remember the 1 over v intercept usually passes at the 0 mark of the 1 over u intercept or at the uh, vertical axis. Uh, so all values of 1 over v, all values of 1 over u along this line or along the 1 over, the, over v uh, axis will always be equal to 0. So at this particular point, the value of 1 over u, remember the 1 over u is my vertical interceptor or my vertical axis. So along the horizontal axis, all values of the vertical axis are usually 0. That is from mathematics. So at this particular point, 1 over u, uh, uh, along the 1 over v at this point, uh, that is the point where the line cuts the horizontal axis or uh, we call this point the 1 over v intercept. So at the 1 over v intercept, the values of 1 over u will always be equal to 0. So if at this point 1 over u is equal to 0, if I substitute 0 in this particular mirror formula, then I'll have 1 over f being equal to 1 over v. So at this particular point, 1 over f is equal to 1 over v because 1 over u is 0. So 0 plus 1 over v, you simply get 1 over v. So we have 1 over f is equal to 1 over v. So that means at the x intercept or at the 1 over v intercept and also at the y intercept, the y intercept you are talking of this point or at the 1 over u intercept. So at this particular point, all values of the 1 over v intercept or all the values of the horizontal intercept will be 0. So at any point along the y intercept or along the 1 over u intercept or along the vertical intercept, all values of the x intercept or all values of the 1 over v intercept or all values of the horizontal intercept are always equal to 0. So at this particular point, this is what we are calling the y-intercept or the 1 over u-intercept. That is a point where the line cuts the y-axis or cuts the 1 over u-axis. Uh, so at this particular point, all values of x will be 0. So at this point, that is at the 1 over u-intercept, the value of 1 over v will be equal to 0. So because at this point 1 over v is 0, it means this equation will disintegrate into so this, this is 0. 1 over v is 0. So we'll remain with 1 over f being equal to 1 over u plus 0. 1 over u plus 0, you simply get 1 over u. So at this particular point, all values of 1 over v will be equal to 0. Therefore, 1 over f will be equal to 1 over u. That's why you are seeing me here saying that 1 over f is equal to 1 over u. Now remember 1 over u is the, uh, represents the x, the y intercept. Then 1 over v represents the horizontal the x intercept that is the horizontal axis intercept while 1 over u represents the uh, vertical intercept that's why we are saying that at the x or at the 1 over v intercept and at the y or at the 1 over u intercept gives uh, the reciprocal of the focal length that is a uh, 1 over f so at the vertical intercept 1 over f will be equal to 1 over u because 1 over v is 0 so you substitute there would remain with 1 over f being equal to 1 over u then at any point along the horizontal axis, that is at this point, all values of y are 0 or all values of 1 over u are 0. So if 1 over u is 0, you substitute here, you will have 1 over f is equals to 1 over v. So that 1 over f is equals 1 over v. So we can simply conclude that uh, the x or the 1 over v intercept and the y or the 1 over u intercept uh, gives the reciprocal of the focal length. So the reciprocal is simply 1 over f. Then the gradient is negative. That is, if we compare these equations, huh? the y is matching the value that is on the y-axis or, or on the vertical axis. Then the x is matching the value that is on the x or the horizontal axis. So you can see 1 over v is matching the, is on the x-axis. Then uh, this also matching the x. Huh? Then m usually represents the gradient of the graph. So the gradient, if 1 over v is the x, then it means the gradient will be a negative or simply equal to negative 1. So why is it a negative? So we are saying that the gradient is negative, implying that the image formed is inverted relative to the object. That is, if the object was facing upwards, then the image must be facing downwards. So the negative gradient simply uh, means that or it shows that the image formed is actually uh, inverted that is as compared to the object or relative to the object then the intercepts will always be equal to the reciprocal of the focal length why because at the intercepts 
one of the values will actually be equal to zero. Now, if I want now the focal length, uh, let me start with the x-intercept. Remember the reciprocal of the uh, focal length is equals to the reciprocal of v that is from at this intercept at the horizontal intercept 1 over u is 0 so the formula becomes 1 over f is equals to 1 over v so if i want the focal length i'll take reciprocals uh, on both sides i'll take reciprocals on both sides so that means uh, f will be equal to the reciprocal of the x intercept or the now remember the x intercept or the horizontal intercept in, in this case is 1 over v so that means the focal length will simply be equal to the reciprocal of 1 over v then if i use the uh, vertical line or the vertical axis then also 1 over f is equals to 1 over u so i take reciprocals on both sides then i'll have f uh, i'll have f being equal to 1 over 1 over u so it means f that is the focal length is equals to the reciprocal of the y intercept but the y intercept is actually 1 over u so that means the focal length will be equal to the reciprocal of the 1 over u intercept and two we look at the graph of uh, the product of u and v against the summation of u and v so remember that for this case uh, the units are uh, u times v if u is in centimeters and v also in centimeters then the units will be centimeter times centimeter which is centimeter squared then u plus v uh, you add centimeters plus centimeters you will still get centimeters for the other case where we'll be we were having one over u the units were in the uh the reciprocal of centimeters that is per centimeter or centimeters power negative one then for this case the graph of uh, uv against u plus v it will always uh, always be a straight line graph we expect it to be a straight line graph or starting from the origin or from the point zero zero so uv is representing our vertical axis or the y-axis from mathematics then u plus v is representing our horizontal axis or the x-axis from mathematics now the question is how do we find the focal length for this particular case so because this graph it will always be a straight line graph then that means we have to compare it with the equation of a straight line graph so earlier on we did say that the first value represents the value on the vertical axis then against the other value represents the value on the horizontal axis so we have to play with the mirror formula uh, in such a way that it appears this way that is the vertical axis becomes uv or the y matches with uv then the x matches with u plus v so to achieve that first of all we uh we find the denominator that is we add the right hand side so the lcm of u and v is simply the product of u and v then uh, u goes into uv v times that is u v and v cancels you remain with uh u and u cancels you remain with v so u into uv goes u goes into uv v times then v uh divides into uv the v and v will cancel then you remain with u then so that we have 1 over f being equal to v plus u divided by uv that is the summation divided by the product now this can also be written as if i take uh if i cross multiply if i decide to cross multiply then the uv will multiply by the one and the f will multiply by v plus u so that i have one times uv being equal to f into bracket v plus u one times uv you get uv then uh, this one simply remains the same f into i've decided to start with u plus v so that it matches uh, my value on the x-axis remember uh, u plus v is just the same as v plus u it's just like when you have a number like 2 plus 3 you get 5 also 5 plus uh also 3 plus 2 you still get 5 so there is no harm as long as it is a uh, addition so here i've made my equation to match the equation of a straight line which is y is equals mx plus c that is a uh, from mathematics although my i don't have the value of c so i'm adding it for uniformity if there is no value of c it means the value of c is simply zero and what that what that means is simply that your graph is not is cutting the axis that is the interceptor that is the y intercept and the x-axis simply at zero 
So that's why you are seeing my C is plus zero or simply uh, as you can see my graph is also starting from zero. So uh, which is actually coinciding with my equation. So on the vertical axis or on the y axis I have uv so you can see my uv is matching. Then on the x axis I have u plus v so you can see the position of x axis I have u plus v. Then m, m usually represents the gradient. Huh? So my gradient is simply equal to the focal length. So from this graph, it's, we can conclude that the gradient of that graph, huh? that is the gradient is changing y or changing uv, again is changing u plus v. So if it was in math, we will say that the gradient is equal to changing y because this will represent the y axis, then over changing x, huh? this will represent the x axis. But our y in this case is uv, then our x is u plus v. So gradient will be given by the change in uv against change in u plus v. So if you find that gradient, the gradient must be equal to the slope or the focal length. So m clearly here, m is equal to the focal length. So the focal length in this case will be equal to the gradient or, or the slope of the graph. So whenever you have a graph of uv against u plus v, the gradient will always be equal to the slope. Remember they can twist. Huh? They ask you to draw a graph of maybe u plus v against uv in such a case i expect the gradient to be equal to maybe something like the reciprocal uh, of the focal length or simply the negative uh, the gradient will be equal to the negative of focal length so here simply the most important thing is to know is that the focal length will be equal to the gradient or the slope of the graph which is equal to change in uv against change in uh, u plus v then because we are taking centimeter squared by, by centimeter, then your focal length or your gradient will simply be in centimeters. Uh, our third graph to analyze is the graph of magnification against V. So if we are introducing magnification, it means you have to look for a way to insert magnification in your equation. Now we know that magnification is equal to V over U. That is the image distance divided by the object distance. So from our mirror formula, the graph of M against V, it will always be a straight line graph cutting the M intercept or the Y intercept at negative one. So because it is a straight line graph, it means we will compare it with the equation of a, a straight line graph that is from mathematics, which is given by Y is equals to MX plus C, where Y is the Y uh, axis M is simply the gradient then x is the x axis then c is the y or the vertical intercept so the vertical intercept in this case is simply what is on the vertical is the magnification or m so from the mirror formula one over f is equals to one over u plus one over v so we need to uh, play around with that equation in such that in such a way that m is on the y axis then x has v because v is the one that is on the x axis so to achieve that, we multiply both sides, uh, every term of this equation by V. Why? Because we want to achieve here V over U. Because we know V over U will be equal to magnification. So if I multiply each term by V, then I'll have 1 over F times V, which is V over F, being equal to 1 over U times V, I'll get V over U. Then 1 over V times V, I'll get simply V over V. So that I have V over F being equal to, now V over U was equals to linear magnification. So V over U is magnification, then V divided by V, you simply get 1. So I have V over F being equal to magnification plus 1. But what is on my Y axis is M, so I need to start with M. So that means I'll take 1, positive 1 into the other side, so when it crosses the equal sign, it becomes a negative, so that I have m being equal to v over f minus 1. So if I start with m, I have m is equals to v over f minus 1, then I can decide to separate this so that I only have v which is on the x-axis. Huh? So that I have m which is equals to 1 over v, 1 over v over f is just the same as 1 times f times v. Because you multiply this, you will still come back here to v over f. So I'm just splitting this one so that they match my equation of a straight line. Uh, so that I have V corresponding with V. Then clearly here, C is corresponding with the negative 1, which is the M intercept. Then 1 over F is corresponding to M. Now remember, M is the gradient of the graph. So clearly, we can conclude that 
m which is the grand of the graph is equals to the reciprocal of the focal length so if you want to find the focal length it will be equal to if you take reciprocals on both sides you will have f being equal to 1 over the gradient or you take a cross multiplication you will simply come to the focal length being equal to the reciprocal of the gradient or the slope of a magnification against v graph so we are saying that the focal length is equal to 1 over gradient so you simply calculate the gradient of this line then the reciprocal of that gradient will be equal to the focal length so gradient in this case will be change in magnification divided by change in v change in m against change in v will be equal to the uh, gradient and the reciprocal of that gradient will be equal to the focal length then m interceptor that is the magnification intercept or the y intercept will always be equal to negative one so whenever you are drawing this graph the graph always uh, if the experiment is accurate enough we expect the graph to cut the m intercept at negative one so we expect a straight line graph uh, then its gradient the reciprocal of the gradient must be equal to the focal length then we look at applications of curved mirrors that is where do we apply curved mirrors in real life situation so the first curved mirror we look at is the concave mirror so the first application of uh, concave mirrors they are applied in they are used as shaving mirrors that is in barber shops uh, uh, shaving mirrors because they usually produce the desired uh, image then concave mirrors are also used by dentists that is when examining the tooth so remember or the teeth uh? so remember that concave mirrors we also said that uh, they are also called converging mirrors uh? so they will give you a very clear image so to achieve that in each case that is for the case of shaving mirrors and also uh, used by uh, by dentist uh, that is to examine the teeth in each case the object is placed within the focal length of a mirror so that uh, a magnified erect a magnified and erect image is obtained so remember we did say object between f and p this is this will be the expected image so the concave mirror is placed in such a way that uh, the object to be viewed like for the case of dentist the tooth to be viewed is placed between the distance between the pole and the uh, principal focus or is placed between the focal length of that mirror so that uh, the image produced is actually magnified so when the dentist is able to see a magnified tooth then that means the dentist is able to see a uh, very fine parts uh, which maybe could be having a uh, defect so that he knows exactly what to treat also as shaving mirrors so the barber or the person shaving you will be able to see or also the person being that is the customer being shaved uh, will be able to see a well magnified image so that he sees clearly the kind of the cut that has been made whether it is the desired style or not so the advantage of using uh, concave mirrors as shaving mirrors that is by placing the image between f and p is that the image produced uh, the image obtained is magnified so as you can see here so the object is smaller that is the head of the person being uh, shaved or even the tooth being examined by the uh, dentist then the image produced uh, is actually magnified or larger and it is also upright or erect then so you can be asked uh, maybe to sketch maybe a ray diagram to explain why a concave mirrors are used as shaving mirrors or by dentists so this will be the expected uh, solution so you just draw a concave mirror with the object between f and p so that the image produced is actually magnified and erect or magnified and upright then two we also use concave mirrors as uh, reflectors behind a projector lamp so the lamp that is the projector lamp is placed at the center of curvature of the concave mirror so we place the lamp this plane this lamp is placed at the c that is at the center of curvature remember this is r which means this is the radius of curvature so you place the lamp at the center of curvature uh, of the concave mirror to reflect light traveling away from the projector such that whenever light is being uh, traveling away it is still reflected through the same same 
uh, mirror so that you get uh, increasing the illumination. Remember rays of light through C are reflected through the same same path. So that is what they are applying. So they place your lamp at C so that all rays that will be produced, they will be reflected through the same same C. That is the send of curvature. So remember we did say that for concave mirrors, a ray uh, through C is reflected through the same path. So the lamp is placed at the center of curvature of the concave mirror to reflect light traveling away from the projector, hence increasing the illumination of the side. That is, it produces a brighter light because all the light that was trying to escape, it is still brought back uh, to the focus or to the required position. Then concave mirrors are also used in telescopes for astronomical observations, that is to study things in the space. So when an object uh, such as a star is very far from the mirror or at infinity, uh, then the rays from any point on it appears to originate from a particular point and are therefore parallel. So the image is thus formed at the focal point. So remember we did say that rays from parallel rays not parallel to the principal axis from infinity they are focused at the uh, focal plane or sometimes at the uh, focal point so we are saying that they are used in telescopes because when an object such as a star uh, which is uh, very far from the mirror or at infinity the rays from any point on it that is from that star appears to originate from a particular point and are therefore parallel to each other then the image is thus formed at the pre, uh, at the focal point or sometimes at the focal plane then the other application is in solar concentrators that is the heat and light energy from the sun can be brought to focus by a concave uh, mirror so remember a concave mirror is a converging mirror so it converges the rays of light from infinity that is from the uh, sun to a common point that is to the principal focus so those are parallel rays not parallel to the principal focus are always uh, reflected at the principal focus or sometimes at the focal plane so the heat and light energy from the sun can be brought to focus by a concave mirror so this fact is employed in solar concentrate solar cookers so we use the so in solar cookers we concentrate that heat energy from the sun to a particular point uh, then we use it to cook our food or even to heat or to boil water. So we are saying that heat and a heat and light energy from the sun can be brought to focus by a concave mirror. This fact is uh, used in solar cookers where a small oven is placed at the focal point of a large mirror. Then we also look at application of convex mirrors. Now where do we apply convex mirrors? So one, convex mirrors are used as driving mirrors, that is in car side mirrors, and also in supermarkets so that the attendants can monitor a large floor area. Now what is the advantage of using a convex mirror as either driving car side mirrors or in driving mirrors or in supermarkets? So the reason is because they give a wider field of view as compared to a plane mirror. So this is because that is we use driving mirrors and uh, we use con convex mirrors as driving mirrors and in supermarkets because they form an upright image regardless of the object distance. So the first reason why we prefer using a convex mirror as driving mirrors or car as car side mirrors or in supermarkets is because the first reason is because a convex mirrors will always form an upright image regardless of the object distance. So convex mirrors always produce upright images regardless of where you place your object then the second reason why you prefer convex mirrors is because they provide a wide field of view so that the overtaking traffic can be easily seen so they give you a wide field of view so like for the case of driving mirrors that is we use them as car driving me as car side mirror so that you will be they'll give you a large a uh, field of view so you can be able to see clearly behind the vehicle a larger distance so that if there is a vehicle coming to overtake you you can easily see it so that to avoid accident so we are using convex mirrors as car driving mirrors or in supermarkets because one they form an upright image regardless of the object distance then two is because they provide a wider 
field of view so that the overtaking traffic can be easily seen so to demonstrate the case of a wide field view consider a plane mirror so if you looked uh if plane mirrors were used as car side mirrors this is what this is this is the only field of view that you will see so it gives a narrow field of view but if we use a convex mirrors because convex mirrors are diverging mirrors huh? so they provide with a very large field of view so if you compare this field of view and this field of view actually you can see that a convex mirror gives you a very large field of view so you can be able to see clearly behind the vehicle the vehicle that is coming to uh, overtake you so that you know clearly uh, how to uh, behave so that to avoid an accident so if this is your eye then this is the field of view that will be able to see if you are using a, con a convex mirror but if you use a plane mirror you will only see a very small field of view so accidents are likely to take place because you will not be able to see all the vehicles that are coming to overtake you then the only advantage yeah? the only the only disadvantage we've said we have two advantages yeah? of convex mirrors why we use them as driving mirrors or supermarkets the two advantages are one they form an upright image regardless of the object distance two is that they give a wider field of view that is as demonstrated here then the disadvantage the only disadvantage of using convex mirrors as driving mirror is that uh, it forms uh, a diminished image giving the impression that the vehicles behind are further away than they actually are so this is dangerous and the driver has to learn to judge distances accurately when using uh, the convex mirror so the only disadvantage of using convex mirrors as car driving mirrors is because uh, they give diminished images remember we said for all positions uh, convex mirrors will always give diminished upright images yeah so the only disadvantage is that of using convex mirrors as driving mirrors is that it forms they form a diminished or very small uh, images that is as compared to how the objects are so they give a diminished or a smaller image giving the driver an impression that the vehicle behind are further away than they actually are so this is dangerous because uh, it can make the driver to think that the vehicle is still very far because it appear, appears smaller huh? that is when using a convex mirror but when they actually uh, the truth is that maybe the vehicle is uh, is nearer is nearer is closer to overtaking then lastly we look at the defects uh, of convex mirror so the only defect of convex mirrors is that they give spherical aberrations they give spherical uh, aberrations uh. so the, the the reflected rays intersect to form a surface called what caustic curves so the only defect of spherical mirrors is that uh, they cause what we call spherical aberration which is caused uh, which is caused by formation of what caustic curves so you can research more about uh, caustic curves and spherical aberrations so we've come to the end of our class today but we need to discuss the quote of the day the quote of the day stated that the first procedure in planning to fail is just failing to make a plan so what does this particular quote mean so the quote is just reminding us that if we have a wish to accomplish anything significant uh, in our lives then we must first devise a plan that will propel us towards achieving that particular wish or that particular dream otherwise our chances of achieving that particular dream will diminish exponentially so a plan will help you to devise uh, a way to propel you or to take you uh, to to start taking small steps towards achieving that particular dream otherwise if you don't have a plan then your chances of achieving it will likely be low and recall that optimism opt, optimism that is being optimistic uh, optimism optimism without action equals to failure but optimism added or plus actions is equals to success so you need to get from a state of wanting to do something and get to a state of actually doing it they always say that the only way to get started uh, the only way to be ahead is to get started so stop from uh, stop saying you will start doing it start taking small steps so start doing it and lastly a dream without passion and a and goal is just a wish so stop wishing 
and start acting. And always believe that you can do it, you will do it, and you must do it. This is Kind Tuition Academy. Kindly subscribe to this channel on YouTube. And also refer more students to this YouTube channel because um, uh, I'm very sure that they are going to benefit. I've made it for them. Thank you.